Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I've spent my whole life in academic institutions, first as a student, then as a teacher. I taught for 15 years in the USA, six in Turkey, and 25 years in Pakistan. So I'd like in this talk to draw some lessons from these life experiences. Our religion teaches us that each life is infinitely precious. Our students have enormous potential. They can be Ghazalis, Ibn al Hasim, Ibn Khaldun. And it is our job as teachers to bring out this potential. I have found that this effort to bring out the hidden potential in the students to be of immense value, extremely fruitful. Countless books have been written on the principles of etiquette for Islamic education extracted from the Quran and the Hadith. I will just mention a few. Our knowledge should not give us pride. Instead, it should make us humble. And we should value our students as having more potential than ourselves. And we should take care to value their time and give them useful knowledge. Because the Prophet ﷺ made dua for useful knowledge and sought protection from useless knowledge. We have a tremendous opportunity because our students can turn into uh, world changers and they can shape the future of the world. This opportunity is also a tremendous responsibility. Some notes on my personal journey. I studied at MIT and Stanford and then for 15 years I taught at top universities in the USA. I left for two reasons because my one was my children were growing up and I didn't want them in public schools in the USA where they would acquire American culture. And the second was that I felt that I was being paid for the job of educating the children of foreigners when our own children in our own countries were not educated. And this was my responsibility. So I left for Turkey and spent six years there and then uh, in various universities in the Pakistan. And I felt mu this much more satisfying because I felt that these students are my students and their successes were my success. And I felt that their failure was also my own failure. So I tried very hard to make sure that they would succeed. The differences that I saw was that at the top universities, the best students were highly competitive and also very confident of their skills. Whereas in the Pakistani public schools, I found that the students had a defeated mindset. They could not conceive of the idea that they could be the world's best. So there's an interesting survey of uh, abilities in uh, leading countries in which uh, the USA students always tend to do the worst on math, but when asked how well you think you did, they express confidence that they have done uh, very well. As opposed to this, and in, in exact contrast, the Japanese students score extremely well on maths, but they say that we have done very poorly. So the amount of confidence that you have is not necessarily proportional to the skills that you have. A critical difference in the role of the teacher in market societies which now dominate the world and in a traditional society, a traditional Islamic society, is that in a market society, a teacher is paid for his work and he does educate the students in return for his salary. As opposed to this, in an Islamic society, the teacher is a mentor, a life guide, a counselor, an advisor, uh, and he acts in a parental role. And he is worries about the personality de development of the students. In terms of personality development, I have found that the greatest obstacle to uh, achievement is lack of self-confidence in our students. The students do not even try to learn because the experience that they have had with learning is very bad. They have been trained to not try to think, instead just to memorize. So. Building their confidence requires working on two fronts. One is the psychological front, which involves decolonization of minds, our process of colonization for uh, the past few centuries has been one of uh, loss of 
uh, at every front, which has led to a defeated mindset. But uh, in addition to building psychological uh, confidence, we also need to provide the skills to match. And so it is the teacher's job to do this. And one of the first things that needs to be done is to believe in the potential of our students to uh, for um, massive accomplishments, for achieving great things. If we believe in them, they will perform to uh, fulfill our expectations of them. In all classes I teach, I now start out with a lecture uh, encouraging students to dream high, have visions. And a few of my lectures were Fareeb Khurda Shahi, uh, The Ways of the Eagles, and Sitaron Se Aage Mukam Aur Bhi Hain, Jahan Aur Bhi Hain, Reaching Beyond the Stars. These are to encourage the students to have confidence and, and to reach high. Uh, in addition to this personal level of building confidence, we also need to rebuild the shattered confidence in our heritage, religion, and culture, on which I also have a num lot of lectures, which are linked here. In order to act as a guide, a mentor, a life coach, we need to create a very different relationship from the one that we are accustomed to in a market society where the teacher's only concern is to teach us a subject. He has no other relationship with us. Instead, we have to become partners of the students and helpers in their quest for knowledge. Uh, we have to switch the uh, students from uh, striving for scores to become knowledge seekers. And this is a very difficult transition because the students have been burnt in the process. It, the search for knowledge comes naturally. Students want to learn things, but they have been frustrated by the way we have taught them. The, both the subject matter and the teaching style has been designed to discourage the search for knowledge. Students have tried many times and have failed and so have given up. So this way, this when we need to, to, to switch their mindsets, this requires changing our own mindset and style of teaching as well as the subject matter. We underestimate our students. Instead of discussing the big problems facing our society, facing the ummah, facing the world, or facing us in our personal lives, we teach them nitty gritty details of trivial questions which have make, make no sense or meaning and deprive of the, of the excitement of learning. If we took them, uh, if we engage with them on problems which actually matter in the real world, and teach the technical stuff as part of what is needed to solve them, they would be very eager and excited and keen to learn. I have found uh, personally that when I started this approach, which inverts the traditional style of the textbook, it was immensely uh, valuable for the students and got the students engaged and interested. Is that we start with a problem, a real world problem, and then develop whatever tools, techniques, theories we teach in the context of solving some real world problem. Uh, also, we can address the life experiences and discuss how we go about solving problems that we face in our lives. So whenever we relate something to the experience of the students, either as individuals or social problems that they are having as communities or within their society, they will be very eager to learn about those. Teaching is a very poor way to generate learning. To learn, the students must tackle the subject, must engage with it, must struggle with it. And the way to do it, one way to do it is the inverted classroom where you give, assign students some reading or some materials or some video lecture. And then in class, we discuss it. One method that I found useful is to put up a list of questions that I plan to discuss, put up one question, ask every student to write the answer to that on their front of them in, uh, on a piece of paper, exchange papers, and then ask a student, what is the answer that is written? And then uh, have a discussion. Is this the correct answer? What is the flaw in it? How should we grade it? In the end, all of the uh, students acquire a much deeper knowledge not just by learning the right answer, but by also learning the wrong answers and the way in which they are wrong. And this is tremendously helpful for learning.
the questions that came up on this material when it was presented was that we try very hard and we do everything according to the plans but when it comes to midterm we find the students fail miserably so actually this should never happen it should never happen that it comes as a surprise to us what the students are doing on the midterm if we at the end of every class we assess what the student has learned we will know exactly what the students are capable of and what they are not capable of so they will be able to assess uh, what students can do uh, at every stage of the game and uh, if we are building skills in every class in every lessons the students progress from one point to another then we will not have any surprises we will know exactly what the students are capable of doing and what they are not capable of doing and this is our job as teachers and if the students fail that means that we have failed them thinking of exams as means of evaluating our students we should think of them as means of helping the students to learn one way to do this is to give them take take home exams in which they uh, they will initially copy from each other and cheat and we have to inform them that the goal is not to get scores actually i need to know how well you are doing and by looking at your answer i will know what you have learned and what you have not learned and i will try to help you do better so this takes the stress out of uh, exams and uh, they can self grade the exams in their own classroom and we can sit down all of the students and sort of do the grading together uh, by putting out the correct answer and then um, or having the students discuss the answers and come to the agreement on what is good and what is bad this methodology for assignments and exams uh, creates uh, much more comfort and much more learning on the students than the stressful methodology currently in use so to summarize the job of the teachers is to inspire to motivate and to build skills we have to teach the students that they can do whatever they want to do they can reach for the stars and we have to motivate them that uh, acquiring an education even though it's a struggle even though thinking and uh, trying uh, has a lot of risk and a lot of struggle required it is worthwhile it it re it, it it creates tremendous results they can be what they want to be they can achieve whatever they want to achieve but in addition to this inspiration and motivation you also need to build skills if we teach students confidence but don't teach them how to drive the car they will crash the car because they are overconfident of their skills so confidence and skills should be developed in parallel so that's the job of the teacher and that's both uh, very difficult and very challenging and also extremely rewarding the most rewarding task in the world all the prophets were sent as teachers and so we follow in a very high profession